Hi, Matt Dempsey, the Farmers Journal. Uh, the occasional reform of the common agricultural policy uh, is now on the table again, um, having had stability since about 2005. So uh, everyone expects it to be finalised under the Irish presidency this time next year. Is that your view? And do you expect to see much technical progress uh, during the competent Danish uh, presidency? And secondly, on the green energy, uh, there are practically no biofuel initiatives in Ireland because of the very low feed-in tariffs. Uh, do you expect any progress in getting a more uniform rate uh, of feed-in tariffs, either imposed or helped uh, to exchequers uh, with problems? Thank you. Well, concerning uh, agricultural policy, this is, of course, one of the major challenges ahead of us, uh, looking also at the uh, multi-annual financial framework with the budget proposal from the Commission, around 40% of the EU budget is in this field. Uh, we will try to move uh, negotiations as much forward as possible during the Danish presidency. Uh, and uh, we are hopeful that uh, progress can be made. Uh, to which extent we will have solved the problems before uh, Ireland uh, will take over the presidency. I believe it's too early to say. But we have the general approach that everything we can make to make your life easier will do. Uh, on, on biofuels, um, the Danish presidency supports initiatives that can promote uh, biofuel production, but I will not uh, go into uh, the <coughs> system uh, being uh, used here in Ireland. I, I'm not an expert in the situation of biofuels in Ireland, but in general I'll just say that the Danish presidency would like to promote this agenda, and I hope that we will have the support of, of all member states. Ambassador, thank you very much for, for your presentation. My question is, you properly mentioned the fact that uh, EU crisis is also confidence crisis, but it's maybe also the trust crisis and also a kind of hike of the old resentments. Mm -hmm. And uh, you as the Danish president, but also as a dear neighboring country of Germany, uh, are you not a little bit worried how much is now increasing and rising a kind of anti-German resentment in many countries, not just program countries, uh, but, but many, many other countries within the EU. Do you see here any opportunity how you could help a little bit so to appease this resentment? Well, first of all, I believe that we should welcome the initiatives uh, of Germany and other countries that want to uh, bring about reforms in the EU. That is necessary. Uh, but we should also uh, be very much aware that, of course, the EU is based on the community method and that we are uh, a union of 27 member states. And it is my clear impression that that is also the position of, of the German government. So this is a time which is tough for every country in the European Union. And I do not believe it's helpful if a blame game is made towards uh, Germany for taking a leadership role. So that is certainly not the position of, of the Danish government. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. Very briefly, answer. Very briefly, answer. Thank you. Uh, Dick, Dick Roach. Um, just uh, the... I was fascinated by your comments about the fiscal compact. Uh, you, my view is that Europe needs a very strong fiscal spine. But I'm particularly interested in the views in Denmark about the, about the fiscal compact because from my reading of the media, it seems that the Danish people who are very pragmatic, have a very strong affinity for it, or very strongly support it, although they're not necessarily supportive of, of Euro membership. Uh, and I think that would have some importance in the debate that we're likely to have here in Ireland. So if you could maybe elaborate a little further on that. I would, thank you. Um, well, in Denmark, there is a broad public support and also a broad parliamentary support uh, for the fiscal compact. Uh, it is seen as necessary to make sure that we do not end up 
uh, in an even bigger mess than what Europe is already in. And that it can help make sure that Europe get back on track. It is not uh, something that will solve all problems in itself. There is still a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of reforms that must be done. But it will be a very helpful instrument to secure that we will not uh, repeat the mistakes of the past when it comes to economic policy. And the Danes, even though we are not a member state of the Eurozone, believe it is very important for all European countries to have sound a sound uh, financial policy and also to make sure basically at the end of the day that we do not spend more money than we can afford to spend. And that is what we have seen in many European countries. And now we just have to say the party is over. Uh, tough times are ahead. But if we act in a responsible way, then we can get through the crisis and then there will be light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, the Danes are, like the Irish, uh, not very easy to convince uh, if they are not very good uh, and substantial uh, arguments to be made for the case. And I believe that to be something that our two uh, countries have in common. Uh, but I can say that seen from the Danish point of view, we have uh, no doubt that it is in the interest of Europe that as many countries as possible join the fiscal compact and we are very pleased that it was possible. We would have liked to see all 27. That was not uh, the case. The, the British uh, took that decision. We respect that is the case. But we are very pleased that, that 25 out of 27 uh, agreed on this and uh, uh, we will see if the Czechs will also join, and then it will be 26 out of 27. But that, of course, like it's up to the Irish to decide for Ireland, is for the Czechs to decide uh, uh, for the Czech Republic. Thank you, Minister. Yes, lady down here. Uh, I'm Lady Halbert from the uh, Ministry of Finance. Um, I wanted to ask you, Minister, in terms of the multiannual financial framework, if I understood what you were saying, um, you don't expect that you'll have actual <coughs> numbers by the end of the Danish presidency. Is that, is that right? What I would say about the issue of the multi-annual financial framework is the following. It is a very tough negotiation which is ahead of us. Uh, it is no secret that um, negotiating the budget of the EU is one of the greatest challenges you can have uh, as a presidency and also as a minister for European affairs. Uh, I have been appointed to the very honorable task of leading the negotiations. And uh, yesterday I had the pleasure of, of meeting uh, with uh, Tony Blair who had uh, the opportunity to lead the negotiations on behalf of Britain in 2005. And he said those were some of the worst negotiations he ever took part in. And then uh, I reminded him of a quote where he had once said that uh, the only comfort to him seven years ago was that the next time it would be even worse. Well, now it's the next time. And uh, I also spoke with Dick, just before going up here, and he said when he started as a minister for European affairs, his hair was black. Now it's white. I only hope I will have hair when I end, when I end as, as uh, minister for European affairs. Uh, but going back to, to the issue of, of, um, of the budget, the way we will approach this is we had uh, at the General Affairs Council meeting in January, uh, and top-down discussion about the priorities of the different member states. And in the subsequent meetings that we'll now have in the General Affairs Council leading up to uh, the European Council meeting in June, we will go into the different parts of the budget with the uh, common agricultural policy on one of the meetings and with cohesion policy on another and so on. 
And what we want to achieve is to be able to present a negotiating box at uh, the council meeting in June. We would like that to be as precise as possible. But to be perfectly frank, it, the, to which extent that is possible <coughs> is not something to be decided by the Danish presidency alone. I mean, that will take the effort of all member states, of the Commission, of the European Parliament. But we expect to be able to present a negotiating box in June. That will be the foundation on which the Cypriots uh, can make their presidency work on this issue. So that hopefully, in accordance with what has been decided by uh, the European Council on an earlier date, we can have uh, a conclusion to the budget by the end of this year. That is what we're working to achieve, and we are putting a lot of work into it. And make no mistake about it, the fact that we are not going to conclude the negotiations during the Danish presidency will by no means uh, mean that we won't do everything we can to achieve results. We are in this uh, very much, and uh, we'll do everything we can to make progress. Thank you, Minister. This will have to be the last question. The Finnish ambassador. Thank you, Minister. Like the Danish presidency, we are investing a lot of hope in the European single market. And there is one area in the single market, the digital single market, where Finland is also hoping a lot of things to happen. And uh, we know already that the Irish uh, government in the presidency preparations are already strongly committed uh, in promoting this issue, the digital single market in the Union. Does uh, the Danish presidency, do you have something special in this respect in your, in your pockets? Well, I can tell you that uh, reforms of the single market and not least the digital single market is a top priority for the Danish presidency. The digital single market will provide growth and jobs uh, in the millions in, in Europe in the years ahead if we do it right. And we must get down to business on this. I mean, this is a way to ensure consumer rights, to increase competition quality, and also to create jobs. So that is what we will be doing during the Danish presidency. And, uh, this is also one of the issues which we will be working on day and night to have progress being made in, because there are many important parts of reforms of, uh, of the single market, but this is crucial. <coughs> and therefore, I'm very pleased uh, and by no means surprised by the support of, of, of Finland in, in that respect. And I believe it's also on the agenda of, of all uh, European countries. So basically, uh, you have a strong supporter of, of that position in Denmark, and we'll do everything we can to make results. Minister, thank, thank you very much for, for coming to us and for sharing your views with us and for being so frank in your answers. <laughs>